Hello everyone, in this video, we'll be discussing about anal nerve cladding exercise. So, what is anal nerve cladding exercise? Anal nerve cladding exercise, also known as neuroglide of nerve forcing exercise, is a series of movements and stretches that are designed to mobilize and promote the healthy function of nerve in the body. It also can be helpful in relieving the symptom of cubital tunnel syndrome by stretching the nerve to reduce pressure. Cubital tunnel syndrome, also known as anal neuropathy or anal nerve entrapment, is a condition that involves compression or irritation of the anal nerves as it passes through the cubital tunnel. The cubital tunnel is a narrow pathway on the inside of the elbow formed by the bone, ligament and muscle of the forearm. The other conditions that suitable for this exercise are anal stabilization and gain canal syndrome. The contraindication for nerve cladding exercise are acute nerve injury, nerve inflammation or active nerve irritation, recent nerve surgery, severe pain or increased symptoms during exercise, and also certain medical conditions. The purpose of anal nerve cladding exercise are to restore natural dynamic balance between the movement of neural tissue and their surrounding mechanical interface, and also to improve grip and pain strain after tender and nerve cladding, to decrease sensitive distal latency and pain relief, and also it may improve pain and body function. How anal nerve cladding exercise works? For the underlying concept behind nerve cladding exercise is that nerve need to be glide or slide smoothly within their surrounding tissue without any undue tension or compression. When a nerve become compressed or irritated, it can cause pain, tingling, numbness or weakness in the affected area. During anal nerve cladding exercise, stretch out the intrapid anal nerve side to side which then smooth the nerve path through the arm and facilitate regular movement of the peripheral nerve. This allows the nerve to glide freely along with the movement of the joint and relax the nerve from compression. This will reduce swelling and restoring blood flow to the nerve which result in pain, swelling and inflammation reduction. This movement also minimizes tension on the entire nerve while localization of bladding to improve extranatural and intranatural mobility. This anal nerve cladding exercise consists of 5 parts with a total of 9 steps. Let's continue with the demonstration to get more clear. Extend your arm straight out by the side of your body, then bend the elbow so that your hand reaches towards your shoulder. With your elbow tucked into your side, turn the palm of your hand towards the ceiling and then to the floor. Extend your arm straight out in front of the body with a straightened elbow with the palm facing up. Slowly make a fist and then gently straighten out fingers. Slowly and gently begin to bend the elbow towards the body while at the same time gently bending the wrist backward away from the body. Then keeping the wrist bent back, slowly and gently straighten the elbow as much as is comfortable. Then undertake the same process but with the arm to the side of your body. Extend your arm to the side of your body with palm facing downward. Slowly bend your elbow towards your shoulder and extend the wrist of fingers pointed to your shoulder. You can repeat this exercise from 2 to 5 times per session. It can be done for a few times in a day and it's recommended to be done every day until the symptoms are relieved. Before starting on a guardian exercise, it's important to take some precaution to ensure safety and prevent injuries. Firstly, consult with healthcare professional prior to the exercise. Do not proceed if you have recent fracture or post surgery. Next, respect pain or any discomfort during exercise. Stop immediately because pushing through pain can worsen existing injury or lead to the new ones. Warming up prior to start any exercise, do perform some gentle arrow and exercise to prepare your wrist and elbow for movement and use proper technique when completing exercise. Lastly, allow yourself enough time to rest and recover in between anal guardian exercise session. This enables tissue healing and help prevent overuse injuries. For grading, it can be done by increase the repetition gradient in light step with 2 until 3 repetition and increase to 4 until 5 repetition for each step. You also can increase the duration to hold in a position from 30 seconds to 1 minute. Next, you also can start from the easy step and gradually increase the difficulty of the steps. For the first evidence, the objective was to compare the effectiveness of ultrasound and nerve guiding on hand grip strength in patients with cubical tunnel syndrome. A handheld dynamometer was being used to measure their grip strength. Those patients were assigned randomly into two equal groups which are Group A that received ultrasound therapy and Group B that received nerve guiding techniques. In addition to the deep night elbow spin for both groups. The final result from this treatment showed that there was a significant improvement in hand grip strength for group B compared to group A. This indicated that the nerve guard exercise one of the treatment that was more effective in treating cubical tunnel syndrome. In the second evidence, the aim was to address the diagnosis and treatment of patients with cubical tunnel syndrome. The study highlighted the use of current therapy technique to target the anal nerve, its supporting tissue and surrounding structure. Specifically, the focus was on justifying the inclusion of nerve guarding technique in the treatment approved. The study assessing a 70 years old female student with cubical tunnel syndrome. She reported persistent pain around the elbow and peritisia in the anal nerve distribution. The assigned treatment include nerve gliding techniques, submitted during manipulation, and a whole exercise program consists of nerve gliding and light free weight exercise. The substantial improvement have been required on both impairment and functional level, which were in pain skill, clinical tests, and not with pain questionnaires. For the visual and the skill for pain skill, show consistent improvement across the session. 
will conclude my bloody exercise are significant in improving cubital tunnel syndrome. The last piece of evidence purpose me to evaluate the effectiveness of conservative treatment such as wearing a brace or performing the bloody exercise. This assessment were conducted before treatment and reassess after six month period. Those patients were assigned randomly into three equal groups. Group A had received fabricated elbow brace, Group B received the client exercise and Group C received exercise modification as the control group. The fit for Group B was stated as below. For grid strength measurement, the overall strength improvement was not statistically significant and there was no significant difference observed between the group. For the neuropsychology examination, there was also no significant difference between the group. For the COPM, there were also no significant difference between the group. Why? The visual and analog pain scale for overall improvement, there were no significant difference in improvement between the group. In conclusion, the applied therapy result in significant improvement within each group as assessed by the repetitive evolution. However, there was no notable difference observed between the group.